This episode, we're going to, yeah, after some time, review and rate Mobile Suit Gundam The Wish for Mercury, episode 8. <laughs> yeah, it's, um, uh, uh it's, it's a bit overdue. And, well, just keep on watching. I don't know if it's, uh, it's a quiet way to come back into, um, into being featured on the Critics Sub, but. I'm not gonna I'm not going to get ahead of myself guys. Okay? First order of business, the thumbnail. The bottom line of this thumbnail is this. Murine gets power played by Shadik. This is actually a hard business lesson for um for Murine. Right? And wow, you can see that shocked look on her face. She never thought uh Shadik would go would go this far just to acquire her company. And yeah. You rarely get that shocked look from uh, from Yurin. Kasi may pagka-control freak ang, uh, ang, uh, ang dalagitang ito eh. Okay. So hence the thumbnail. Now, on to the nitty gritty of this episode. Of course, we're gonna do it critics of style. Base! It had a um, moderate pacing kasi if you would look at it on from an educational standpoint, you would actually feel for the lead characters here because they just they just started a company all by themselves and all of them are just students. Do I have complaints? Minaman, I took this episode because as a um, as a refresher course in um, in uh, in this in entrepreneurship. Yep. Okay. So, which will be benefit to me. But if you uh, if you're going to look at it as an ordinary viewer, you might find the pacing boring. The pacing was moderate, because they were uh, they were frantically trying to establish this company as quickly as they can. Because, well, they got investors and they need to satisfy them off the bat. That uh, their their activities should be public should be public knowledge, and yep, it works in real life. Lolaman. First gear shift here was when Suleta and Yurin consulted Prospera. Nani ni Suleta. I see that as a gear shift. Bakit? Kasi, well, in episode 7, um, Yurin, Yurin inadvertently brought out the development teams of, uh, uh, of Prospera's company and Bill. House Bill, UK, uh, UK Elan. So, yung development team sila, kumbaga, inabsorb ng kumpanya ni Yurin. And, bo, she's asking guidance. Okay, natural lang yun. I, I view this as a character development gearship for, for Yurin. Okay? Kasi, bo, obviously, in this gearship, she's taking full, full responsibility for, um, for for all the uh, for all, for all the events that transpired during episode seven, especially during that party, I would call it a gear shift. I don't know what you I don't know about you guys. Second gear shift was when uh, after a somewhat heated discussion, Murin starts uh, assigning everyone tasks in in what to do. So, well, that confirms my uh my uh, deeming of the first gear ship as a gear ship. Kasi, oh, umira na ba kasi CEO ni, ni Murin dito? It's a gear ship. Because, the CEO herself has taken, uh, has taken massive action in, uh, uh, in the wheels of her company. Dapat lang, eh. ikaw si, ikaw nang establish ang kumpanya nito, eh. ikaw founder eh. So, iba eh, ay, eh, tumayod ka. Final gear ship was well, uh, the scene that triggered our thumbnail, of course. Yurin gets power played by Shadik. That's a no brainer, guys. If you want to incite conflict between um, between members of two really big and rich families, yup. Uh, if you're if you're writing the script, you should do it this way. <laughs> As of this gear ship, hindi pa natin talaga clear kung ano ang motive niya ano eh. Kung ano ang motive ni, ni Shatik. Right? 
Maybe he wants to um, he wants to date Murin. Maybe he wants to date Soleta, or maybe he wants to have that company all by himself. Because eh, ganda, eh, ganda ba naman ang produkto eh. Basta, ang daming questions na, na dapat sagutin ni Shadik in the next episode because of this leadership. It's a no-brainer, guys, okay? At least for me, it's a no-brainer. So, these three gearships that I saw, now, do not watch these three gearships um, as they are. Watch the entire episode. But, let me warn you guys, some, there are some scenes here that are, that are, uh, that are sleepers. Ako gumagano na ako eh. Uh, Bigo has seen my reaction. So yeah. My dozing off like that, yeah. It got caught on video. Plot wise. Um. Yeah. Malinis ang blood, guys. Despite the... Despite some sleeper sequences, but it is some not plot, right? It took us to um, the journey these uh, these teenagers went through just to establish their wow, their impromptu company. Because they're impromptu. If you've seen episode seven, to cinch in uh, a side story or backstory sequence in this kind of an episode, no, out of the question. Baka baka lalo na ng audience. Another lesson learned, guys, because with clean plots, yeah, an episode can neither become a stunner or a sleeper. Don't get me wrong, guys. The plot is still clean. It's still tolerated. So, base flow and plot, we simply came together for this episode, folks. You know, Kung di lang dahil sa final scene, baka hindi na ako nagising sa episode na to. So, Mobos of Gundam, The Witch from Mercury, episode 8. I'm sorry, Gundam fans. I just couldn't get off of my mind those uh, those two sleeper sequences. Eh. Dahil doon, um, my discerning of the gear shifts may be wrong. Okay? Sinasabi ko na sa inyo guys. Right? It's because of those two gear shifts that I got, uh, that I got, uh, that I was caught off guard when it comes to uh, discerning which scenes are gear shifts. So, my margin of error is pretty high. So, I strongly suggest, um, you go through the entire episode and, well, Tell me, which of those scenes can be gearship steel? Right? So, in the meantime, watch the next review.